about the middle of 2007, the trend was up. From 2007, mid-2007 to the present, the trend, again, is down. There's really, I mean, you can kind of, kind of determine what the trend is, but guess what? It doesn't matter what you determine the trend is. Prices, the only rule to prices is the prices will fluctuate. So we try to create trades based around certain parameters that we're determining that will help us to become profitable. But we do not try to predict price. In other words, if I'm looking at this uh, IWM chart for the Russell 2000, I might say, well, you know what? <clears throat> We're starting to reach, um, if you know anything about technical analysis, you know, um, right around the 72, 73 level, um, you know, we hit, we, th it's a potential here to, uh, this could be considered a resistance point. In other words, the, IDEM, the Russell uh, 2000 has come up against this line once, twice, three times, and this is the fourth time, and it's, you know, it seems like it just can't break through to that point. Uh, resistance points usually have been prior support points. And you can see that when the IWM Russell 2000 started to decline, it was, this price level here was a support. In other words, it held the price before and it went back up. It held it again here and then went back up. Then finally, when it broke through that price, it actually came back up and all of a sudden, the support that was here now becomes the resistance. That is more often than not one of the best technical analysis tools that the market uh, that you could do on a market is that prior support becomes resistance, and then if this price should break through this resistance point, um, it will come probably become support again. Okay, that's one of the things that we, we kind of keep an eye on. We also keep an eye on, we don't do a lot with technical analysis, but in general, prices tend to move um, in channels. So we'll set, up, we'll set up channels for stocks. You know, they don't have to be exact, but, you know, what we like to do is we like to see where the high high end of the, the price levels are headed and where the low end of the price levels are headed. And sometimes they break through and then they come back up, and, but they hit the price levels again and they come back up. You could look at this two ways. Number one, if we were to do any kind of technical analysis on a Russell 2000, we could easily say that, hey, it's in a downtrend channel and it's meeting some resistance at the 73 level, which means that it may go back down again. So, you know, we don't, we don't try to predict price, but we do try to get a feel for where it is at the time. And that somewhat gives us uh, some sort of indication of how we should be placing our trades. If we think there's a little more risk to the downside, well, instead of choosing the 68 puts to sell, maybe we'll go down and choose the 68 puts to sell. So it gives us a little bit more room on the downside. But as you can see, you know, there may be support brewing right around the 68 level because it hit it here and it went back up. It hit it here and it went up. So 68 might be a good place to put our puts and sell our puts at this point because it's, it's formed a support point a couple of times when the market has gone down. Now, let's take a look at an analysis of what this uh, position would actually look like. We'll right click there and we'll analyze duplicate trade. We'll go back to our trade tab and take a look at this trade as well. And we'll analyze this duplicate trade. Now what we've done is we've set up for ourselves a little bit of a profit area. This green line is what 
the is is will will actually tell you the maximum profit that this position will be able to generate at expiration of these options. Remember, options expire the third Friday. Actually, the last trading day is the third Friday of each month. The options expire the day after that. So that's why it's plus one at expiration. Expiration date, um, in this case, is for May options is the 16th. Uh, but the, that's the day that they actually stop trading, but the expiration date is the 17th. So all we have to do is take a look at, let's see, yep, the, uh, it's, it's actually the May 17th, which is the expiration of the, uh, expiration date of the option. So if we were to take these trades, which is which is uh, the t this type of trade is called selling a vertical spread. We're selling a vertical spread for a credit. Now, what does this give us? What kind of advantage does this give us? What kind of trade advantage does this give us? Well, the people who we are selling the contracts to at 74 believe it's going to be uh, the price is going to be at 74 or better, and the people who let me just change this here. Okay, live. Um, the people that we're selling to think it's going to be at, at 74 or higher by expiration date. And the people who purchase from us the contracts at 68 on the put side uh, believe that the market is going to drop and that's and the index price will be below 68 at expiration. And we don't care which way they go. To be honest with you, it doesn't matter to us who's right or who's wrong. The only thing that we want to do is to be able to profit from the sale of those contracts. And you can see that setting up a uh, trade such as this gives us a break-even point of anywhere from 67.5 all the way to 74.5. That's a pretty wide range. In other words, uh, we are taking advantage of the fact of the number one rule of the markets, that prices will fluctuate. We're not very good at predicting future prices. You can ask, I mean, you can, hey, you can ask anyone, I don't care how much experience they have in the market. It doesn't matter. No one can predict the future. No one. If anybody tells you that they can predict the future, run as fast as you can away from them because no one can predict the future. The only thing we can do, like I said, is you can take a look at some general trends. You can take a look at some support and, support and resistance points, and that's about the best you can do. Um, I've gone through all kinds of different systems where they said, well, there's, you know, yeah, you can predict, you can predict 80% of the increase in the price of a stock, or you can predict the uh, price of a stock 80% of the time. Okay, well, yeah, you can, maybe you can predict it 80% of the time, but what about that other 20%? And then how do you trade that? So what we're doing is by creating the types of um, trades that we're going to be putting on in the system, we are giving ourselves uh, a, a huge, huge uh, potential to profit because we don't have to predict price anymore. You know, the price once we set, once we put this type of a trade on, the, it doesn't matter if the stock goes up or the stock goes down, because it could go down to 69, and guess what? We still get our full potential profit from this uh, from this system. The only problem that we run into is when the price starts to, to come down, either towards our um, lower strike price um, or at the higher strike price. Then what we do is simply adjust. All we have to do is adjust our prices and adjust our contracts to take advantage of the new opportunities available to us if the price of the underlying stock goes reaches our uh, break-even points. 
we never really have to be too concerned about